hi guys you're welcome back to another video my name is doreen if this is your first time chancing upon my channel please subscribe to my channel i promise you have fun here i'm a very fun person trust me but that's just by the way if you're new here please subscribe please like this video before you even watch it because it's gonna be like a good video why am i talking so fast anyway so in this video i want to talk about all the things that you should do immediately after you get your visa approved makes sense okay so the first thing you should do is book your flight yeah also you do not need an agent to book a flight for you or you need to be a better so charlie the internet is a it's like the internet is just to make life easy for us so so take advantage of it if you can read and write your like a computer literate you can do it it can so they be better so me i use travel wings it's it's a uh, uh, there's waka now there's travel wings like there are so many um like agencies that have online platform with which you can use to book flights you don't need to like hey they say papi you book your flights mawa i prefer my phone to my laptop that's why i'm always like trying hard to make sure i have a good phone because i like to use my phone than my laptop would you believe it if i tell you that my whole canada process i use the laptop like two percent of the time I can you know, use my phone to do it. You can do like and yet you may be at yeah, to be very honest. The first thing you do is to book a flight. Me, I came with Royal Air Maroc and it cost me 10,216 CDs. I think the time that I was traveling also played a role because I know somebody I left in February. I know someone who left in March and he paid like to 20,000. He came with uh Tap Portugal i think but i came with air maroc and let me tell you the reasons why i chose air maroc i know a lot of people say that um air maroc is not a good flight it's a cheap flight it's, it's for broke people um your luggage will get missing i like i had a lot of bad reviews about air maroc but the truth is every, i don't think they intentionally misplace your luggages I don't think that's what happened because i've heard a lot of other airlines that also lose people's luggage i don't know why air maroc's own is so loud but every single person that was on a flight with me i don't think we had any problem and i also feel like they've probably heard all these complaints and they are trying to do better so it's not a bad option if you are broke is it 10,000 cities is not small money me i chose it because it was the cheapest day and lucky for me i wanted to go to montreal and it was going to montreal so there was no need for me to go and book british airways or whatever whatever and pay 50,000 cities or 30,000 cities when this one was giving me 10,000 cities so i booked royal air maroc well it was my first time on an international flight i had used the small small planes the kumasi those small small planes Torture planes. I've I had used those ones before, so it wasn't really my first time on an air on a flight. But it was my it was my first time on an um, international flight, and maybe it's because of my personality. It doesn't really take too much to please me, so I wasn't expecting a ride on a cloud to paradise. I don't know. I was quite indifferent, but to be honest, I enjoyed my flight. I didn't have any, like, I didn't have any complaints except for um, some small portion of rice that they gave me. I think I, I can find a video and I'll put it, like, I'm from Senabriku, like, why would you give me this small amount of rice? And so me. Funny thing was, some of the pineapple, so near me are you, some of the pineapple leaves near me are you, not a sugar, sugar, woo, and tea, not me but apart from that almost everything they gave ah and something they came to ask me do i like fish or chicken and i said i wanted chicken said chicken no mu nyam you so mu wo you so me and indian no mu you no mu sandy bo mu biom no me name so mu steam me you so mu chi you i don't know what they did to it but that was a little but then also coming to canada what kind of foods were you expecting to eat and it's not Ghana Airways that you expect that they'll bring you kokonte or emutu 
it's Morocco Airways, so they'll definitely serve you their food. Like, I feel like I've heard a, a couple of people complain about stuff like this, but I don't know why. I don't know what you're expecting, but it's their country's airline and they're definitely going to serve you their country's food. So what's the complaint? If you don't like it, okay, go and pick Ghana Airways, pick a African World Airlines to Canada and let them give you fufu. So now you've booked your flight. Uh -huh. So I'll find the travel wings and I'll put it down there. Click on it. You can find it. You find all the airlines that you want to. Like they have every airline there. Delta, or you can come with Delta to Canada just that you pass US. And I think now when you need a US something, something, this. And I think British Airways, you don't need it with a visa. But British Air, Air France, Brussels, whatever, it's all there. Just choose it. Me, I was using the price to choose it, and luckily enough, they were landing exactly where I wanted to go, so it worked for me. But Air Maroc is not a bad flight. They gave me a small pillow, they gave me socks, they gave me headphones. I had a screen I could watch. They gave us a lot of food, drinks, water. Um, just that the water they were serving it small, 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 small. It's like this, but they like drinks more than water. So they were serving the water small, small, small. So can I have some water? They'll give you. Can I have some water? They'll give you. They'll give you. Okay. It's not like, it's not bad, to be honest. I enjoyed my flight. Which I, I haven't been on any other flight. But if I have the chance to come again, I will choose it again. I liked it. I liked my experience at Morocco. If you watch my first day in Canada video, like there were a lot of free things I, I could do. I took advantage of that. I made a new friend. He was going to um, UK. He So we all transited at Casablanca and then he picked his next flight to UK and I went to Canada. I enjoyed it. I had fun. That airport was cool. Just that you can't go out and my transit was for like four hours. Four or six hours, one of it, I'll confirm and write it somewhere. But I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I had fun. Royal Air Maroc. I had fun. The only thing I didn't like was the time that they left Ghana. You know, I was saying that I have a lot of family members in the US and they mostly use Delta. And Delta normally leaves in the evening, like 10. So you normally get to the airport like 7, 8, and you know that's like fair but now even delta cry here now they leave like 5 p.m or something i don't know but i know that has changed but for royal and maroc we left ghana 4 a.m so and check-in begins at 12 so i got to the airport like 12 11 12 thereabouts and then we left at 4 a.m but what's really the big deal the only thing is you not get so many people to follow you to the airport but me i did so the the friends you saw in my video that was like they sacrificing their sleep to come and see me off that's really cute thank you so much guys uh yeah it's it's not really a big deal i hear if they love you do come so then the next thing to do is pack and packing um you'd have to check the airline that you're coming with i know some airlines have suitcase descriptions and some also allow just one suitcase some allow to i mean you need to go through your ticket and see what your airline really wants so mine was a regular one 23 kg i had to pack my whole life into two 23 kgs and one 5 to 10 kgs for royal air maroc they kind of insist that your hand luggage and your backpack should be 10 kg so don't overpack it and your 23 kg is there and they're normal and there was not really any restrictions to the things i could carry with royal air maroc everything i brought made it to canada and yeah you know ghana airports okay me i don't know i know some people don't do it but with my experience with airports immediately you enter the airport you go to your left and you go and pay 50 cities and declare the things in your bags i don't know if that one helps with you being safe to carry everything else i don't know if that helps but i do that every time and all the things i brought made it fish everything made it oh so i even wrote it down here so my flight from accra to casablanca was four hours 30 minutes and my layover lasted seven hours and then from casablanca to montreal was seven hours 40 minutes it's seven hours it didn't feel like seven hours so maybe because i had my phone so the time just went by really quick no it was supposed to be seven hours and they sent us an email that we will leave two hours earlier 
Ha, uh-huh. yeah, I think so. I think that's what happened. That's it. So the next thing is pack. Pack your 23 kgs. So it like I was saying, it depends on the time that you're coming. If you're coming in summer, it gets really hot. So pack like short stuff. I didn't set it. And yeah, so pack like because it really gets hot here. And if you're coming in the winter, hmm. So there is this thing, they are called thermal waste. I found out really late about it. I don't know why. But like uh, I won't say material now footballers they bow bone no. uh, leggings and and long sleeves like that. It also helps you trap cold. So find some. If you don't get it, you know when you come, you can get some here. And the jackets. I used to think that the bigger the jackets, the better it is, but it just has to be um some fabric. How do I even see it? When I was coming, the jacket I brought, it was very heavy. And sad thing was the inside was fluffy and all. But then it was like material. It took me for... I don't know how to explain this thing. <laughs> but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. So my advice, if you are coming, just... Just get a jacket that's... Men to light one. But the outer part shouldn't be material it should be something that you know water can't easily seep through and it should like cover you enough to do try and get one that has a hoodie and when you get here you can get some um look for value village there are lots of um places that give out clothing and what's not especially during winter especially to homeless people they are good enough i i i did i volunteered at a place like that before and we do our best to select the best so i mean ghana now man we bring away with our toy so <laughs> sometimes God, those places go to me now brand new ones the purple jacket i've been wearing i got it from there it was new i got it for free so trying to take advantage of those little, little things when you come and another thing that i'll mention that is essential is seasonings it's either they are very expensive where you be or they are non-existent because when i came i've not seen the regular rainy and all those things but i think i when i went to montreal i saw some but in sadby here they're not really here like that so i brought a lot of seasonings from home like chicken seasoning beef seasonings all pepper seasonings and kivu hot pepper pepper is very expensive in this country i don't know why but pepper is very very expensive if i had to go back to Ghana again i'll bring like five of the big size kivu i brought only one which is good enough but if you like if you like pepper bring powdered pepper bring seasonings pepper and tea let's just pack pack it with kakra dry face kakra shrimps kakra shito kakra gari kakra things that you like you understand and when it comes to snacks maybe you can bring like a few that you use for a day or two because snacks think in your sugar room are actually cheaper here than the healthy stuff so yeah don't really pack snacks like sugar sugar no man ubi nyawaha so just come with like the essentials the things that you're not going to be getting on a regular here so yeah you get what I mean. and also shoes and socks shoes are worn here very often when i was in ghana I barely wore shoes but coming here shoes are very very important and you need a lot of socks too so come with enough shoes and enough socks too yeah the socks i think if you know if you wear shoes without socks your shoes will smell with it in that's what they say me I, I don't really know so much about shoes but come with shoes and socks a lot of socks and be repeating socks and your, smoke, your socks will be smelling like dog and also you need a backpack it's very much recommended especially when you come fresh that you don't have a bag imagine it's cold your hands are freezing and i don't know but backpacking the way to me that she with you and it's good so if you can bring a backpack you can even pack little little things cry when you're coming i mean it's convenient but bring a backpack I also like to see sorry and i also like to say um try your best and say your goodbyes um if you're evacuating where you're living like i did claire i don't know but just leave on a good note basically i've been talking for like forever come with a travel adapter especially if you are coming with a lot of things that have the Ghana style 
um, socket it's different here the socket is those two slim ones so come with a travel adapter that has the slim this thing wait let me show you one ah so this is a travel adapter and this this is the pin that is normally used here so you see this one it has a lot of other options see being a simple uh-huh hey. uh -huh. so if i was in ghana i can use this pin in ghana but here it doesn't work here so if i go to ghana i can send it there's also this one this is supposed to go back yes. i don't know why wait i'm coming uh -huh. it's gone so this is also there i think this also works in ghana but i think it's europe so if i go to europe i can still use it so try and get one of these this one this one i got it from timu i if you watch my videos you know i needed it and i got it from timu i bought like i ended up buying like seven nobody asked but yeah i got it from timu for like two dollars so but try and bring one because i don't know just just saying yeah then once you're packed all packed up you know when you're leaving ghana or wherever you're coming from and yeah try and go early check in early so that you can relax and like i was saying for in Maroc, i didn't have any problems the experience was good the only thing was the size of the plane the size of the plane from accra to morocco was a smaller plane but it was comfortable if you are not bigger than me you'll be fine it was comfortable and yeah it wasn't bad i enjoyed it i slept so i mean if you left ghana for him for him what am i going to do i slept and when you go to the airport just follow the crowd <laughs> most of the time because they were speaking some i don't know what i think it's french but just follow the crowd most people are going where you are going so just ask you are coming from ghana so most of them will be Ghanaian. so just ask and then just follow the crowd you will figure it out you have seven hours to figure your life out so you'll be fine and we left morocco and came to canada and when you come to canada too same thing follow the crowd you get to a point where they'll ask you are you a student are you coming as a, a, res a permanent resident are you coming as a visitor i don't know but there's a point where they'll ask you and they'll show you where to go and that's where you um, go for your study permit and for the study permit <laughs> i don't know i've seen a lot of videos about the questions they ask um before you get your study permits maybe i was lucky because me they asked me like three questions and yeah when you go bonjour, bonjour it's montreal i went to montreal is more of french speaking than english so bonjour i said bonjour then he started speaking french and i'm like english please and then he started speaking english and then he said welcome to canada and i'm like thank you and he's like how long am i expecting to be here and i said oh about nine to ten months i should be back in ghana and you have to be very confident see the way i'm saying it that's exactly how i was saying it i'm a very outspoken person so it wasn't really a problem for me but just be confident don't look like you're stealing you understand just be confident he's like how long am i planning to stay and i'm saying i said oh just about eight to um, nine to ten months i should be back in ghana and then he said i should prove to him that i'm really coming to school and i'm like oh do you want to see my admission letter and he's like yeah sure and then i was pulling the hard copy out for him he was like do i have an email from the school and i'm like yeah i do then i showed him the email and then he's like so what are my plans after school that's a tricky question you see he wanted me to say that oh Maybe when I finish school, I'll find a work to do. Hey, because you say me want Ghana. So you break to be precise. So I left Ghana like the day after my graduation from GHIS. I came to I came from Kumasi and then the next day I left Ghana. So I showed him my graduation pictures. Oh, right after school, I'm planning to go back to Ghana because i'm a i'm now i'm a i'm a certified valuation and essay science, and i showed him my graduation pictures that and he can even see the date i may share that pan i'm like oh i just graduated two days ago and you know i'm very excited to practice in ghana so i just want to come and specialize in project management and get a certificate from canada and attach to my portfolio so that you know i'm a little in ghana and he was like oh nice and he said my pictures were nice and then he said welcome to 
welcome to Canada. And I'm like, thank you. And I'm like, am I done? And he's like, yes. And he just printed my study permit out. And then he told me to confirm if my name and everything was right. I gave him my passport, but he just told me to confirm if my name and everything was right. And I said, oh, everything is perfect. And then he's like, um, after my studies, they've given me something, something, number of days extra that I can just use to explore. And I'm like, oh, that's nice of you. Just look like you don't need to be in Canada, basically. Just look like in here. I don't know why they want us to do that, but just look like you don't even want to stay here. Aha, uh -huh. and I also said something. I said that when I got here, I realized it was very cold and in my country is very hot. And I can't wait to go back to that because I don't think I'll be able to deal with the cold for so long. Like, just let them know that you don't you don't care, you know? That's it. Just be confident. See how I'm saying it casually. Believe me, that's exactly how I was talking when I was there. That's exactly how I was talking when I was there. If you know me, you know. You know that that's how I would say it. So after getting your study permit, then you know that when I'm back was system new dada. So you just come out, follow the crowd as usual, go and get your bags. And yeah, that's it. And also when you get to the airport, there are people who do um SIM card registration and um SI and SI and social social insurance number people do that registration there a lot of people discourage people against it i don't know why but for me the time i got to much i was like 10 p.m in the evening and i didn't see anybody like that maybe i would have done it but i didn't do it and it also depends if and ah uh, i also hear that because it's the airport and like a lot of people are in a rush they don't really give you the best offer. So maybe if you have an option, don't do it at the airport. When you come home and you're more settled, then you go and do it. If you if you have followed my videos to this point, you know that I was in Montreal. So I landed there. I spent the night there and the following morning I, I came to Sudbury. And there's Wi-Fi almost everywhere. So I was still, you know, able to be in touch with the people I needed to be in touch with. I got to Sudbury and I didn't have a SIM card. So I, I got down at the bus stop. What I did was I asked the receptionist at the bus stop the bus station transit terminal whatever it's called to help me get a taxi so i got a taxi and i went to the hotel i knew the hotel i was going to so i told them and then they took me there and yeah the following morning i took an, another taxi i spoke to the hotel receptionist and then they helped me get a taxi and i went to i searched for fido I do the network I'm using right now, and it's not bad. Currently, I'm paying twenty nine dollars a month, so I searched for Fido, and then they showed me where I can get um, Fido SIM, and then I took a taxi and we went there, and I got my Fido SIM. And when you come, your most important documents are going to be your passport and your study permit. So your first few days, you might want to have to carry it around you know to everywhere like that's your only form of identification at that moment for fido i registered for 20 gigabytes a month and i think free calls and all those other stuff but i get 20 gigabytes a month and yeah for 29 dollars it's actually 33 33 dollars but when you sign up for automatic payments with your credit card you get a discount of five dollars so that brings it to 29 dollars so i pay 29 dollars a month um for phone bills yeah yeah pretty cheap i know i have my sim card now and the next thing i did was to get a bus pass so i don't know how it is like every in every other place in canada but i just went to a transit seminar some the the person who did my sim card for me was a Ghanaian, luckily so he showed me where i can go to get a sim card but it's just it's mostly transit terminal so just search for transit terminal and then go and get a bus pass it's 89 dollars i know it's pretty expensive because i know it's like 50 and cheaper in other provinces but here it's 89 dollars for students for one month and for your first purchase you need to get a card with your picture on it and i don't know if they accept like foot your hard copy passport pictures but if you have one just send it just in case maybe they accept it but i didn't have it with me there 
so i took another one it, and it brought my total to 107 for my first bus pass but after that i've been paying 89 dollars every month for one month that was tautology i know after you get your bus pass um another thing that i'll recommend you do is get your sin number which you can get at any service canada point around you so once again google map the map system is pretty good here so google map service canada and go there say that you just came and you, you want sin number they'll give you a sin number send your study permits to and your passport they'll give you a sin number you need that to work then after getting your sin another thing you might want to have to do is create a bank account um there are a couple of banks here i bank with rbc this is no paid they've not sent me to do anything but they dashed me hundred dollars when i created the account after a few weeks one day i just opened my account and i saw hundred dollars and i went to ask and they said oh yeah rbc does that for students and they gave me a credit card and yeah, I know some bank, I've heard some banks give $500, some don't give at all, but I obviously gave me a credit card with $1,000, yeah. So yeah, RBC gave me a credit card and I haven't had any issues with RBC so far, I love it. I don't regret banking with RBC. So if you're coming and you're wondering the bank to create an account with, I recommend RBC, it's not bad. They don't charge me for anything. I don't pay for anything extra for it. I've never paid anything. I mean, in fact, they have even dashed me money safe. So why not? And back to how I got my accommodation. This is a question somebody has asked me like twice. So this is what I did. But I recommend that if your school has campus accommodations, explore that. I wish I did because for my school, when you come as a fresh student, your first semester they give you a bursary and you end up paying like 450 canadian dollars a month which is pretty good and very cheap but you have to pay it in bulk so when i saw the amount i'm like hmm, i might probably even get cheaper somewhere and then what i'm paying right now as rent is a lot it's a lot of money almost two times is it almost two times 1.5 yes more than what the campus people would have charged me so just take your time and explore your campus housing options especially if you're coming as a single person i think you should explore explore that and how did i get my accommodation aside the campus thing so i went on instagram and then i went to all the the black people who follow my school and i mean some of them are very old you can see that will be the review school yeah they are alumni but i just i saw this girl in her post look like she had just got into canada I've mentioned her name on my channel before, <laughs> Rosie. So I texted her and I told her that, oh, I just got admission, I'm coming, so so and so date, and I'll need accommodation. And she gave me the contact of an agent. We spoke, and I didn't quite like the options he was giving me. And I thought they were quite expensive, they were quite pricey. And lucky for me, she had a friend who had a room she was willing to give out in her house so yeah we spoke about it and the price was better and i took the offer so i came and then i came to the rosie's friend's house yeah so that's how i found my accommodation you can also go on linkedin go and look at it you should also want to check the years that the people have put there that they were cambrian students before you go and check somebody who finished 50 years ago you know what i'm saying and um another thing i want to talk about is so for me when i came my room was unfinished it was an empty room and i recommend that you explore options from thrift stores most thrift stores have like good pretty good stuff i got my mattress and my box my box spring for my mattress was 80 dollars my box spring was 50 dollars so how much is that if you add to it, it's 100 and if you left it there, it's 130 dollars for my mattress and my box spring. I got like a, quite, a, quite a number of things from the thrift store. My duvet, I got it from a thrift store. It was so neat. Only thing I did was I bought a duvet cover to cover it, you know, just to be double safe. I mean, I'm from Ghana. I shop from Makola, so what's the big deal? So yeah, I got I got like a couple of things from the thrift store. It's not bad. 
Valley Village. The the particular one that I got it from is called Saint Vincent de Paul. So maybe if we come to start we you might want to check it out. But I think they have branches in other prov provinces. Provinces. So you can check. But yeah, basically i recommend trying to get stuff from thrift stores it's not bad it's not that bad to be very honest and yeah you should be settled by now because i'll be do her i'll show you where you can get some things your room is not i don't know but welcome to canada basically so yeah those are my two cents on settling in canada yeah basically that's it Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a little chaotic, but I'm a little tired. So pardon me. And I hope at least I was able to pass one or two important information or share something with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you don't mind, I'll please plead your distance to like, share, and subscribe. The share is very important to me, by the way. If you don't mind, please share my video so somebody else can see it. Thank you so much for watching this video.